Hi, everyone, and welcome. It is Wednesday, the 26th of July, mm -hmm. and we are here, I think, for our 167th consecutive hangout for the Knowledge Bowl Live. So it's amazing. We're going to do a, uh, a theme show today. As you clicked on the thumbnail, you know we're doing pairing. And that may be a word you're not very familiar with. You may just be familiar with the word classified meteorites or published meteorites, but there's a term called pairing. And depending on who's using that term with you, it means different things. So we're going to be checking in with Mike Kelly, our uh, resident uh, 101 instructor, and he's going to give us a little bit of a rundown uh, of the pairing and from whose point of view does it mean what. We also have Daniel Shake, a, a meteorite classifier, uh, on with us as well, and he's going to add a little bit to the conversation. We have Roberto Vargas joining us later on for some show and tell uh, to help explain a little bit more of the pairings and why they are the way they are. Paired classifications are actually multiple fragments from the same original meteorite that were found at different times, but are classified and scientifically confirmed to be part of the same fall. Pairings are published in the MEPL under different names. Mike, are you with us, man? Certainly am. So uh, it's very important to understand that when someone says pairing, it's done in context, and not everyone's talking about pairing in the same context. Uh, so one of the things you need to think about is the fact that there are a whole bunch of different types of pairings. We have listed down here. The finder can judge that the material is paired. Maybe the first person who sold the material wholesale determines that the material is paired together, that they've gotten from a couple different people in the field. Maybe the intermediate or the final retail seller goes ahead and uh, determines that material is paired. Sometimes people might send things off to a classifier. Uh, and they might determine that it's paired, which may technically be different than it being officially paired. And we'll cover mm -hmm. that throughout the, uh, the course of the evening. Uh, and then we'll talk about the really fun one, launch pairings. Looking at some of the, uh, the things on the first type of pairing, which is finder paired materials. This could be interesting because a lot of meteorites fragment uh, when they're going through their boloid entering the atmosphere phase, which means you have bits of meteorites scattered all over forming what's called a strewn field. And obviously all that material will be the same material, but there are some interesting cases where sometimes uh, when meteorite hunters are out there finding things, they start to realize over time that there may just happen to be more than one type of meteorite material out there. So there can be overlapping strewn fields. Uh, I put a couple examples on there, uh, Malga North, uh, Malga South, and one more meteorite are found in Australia, all overlapping each other. So there's three overlapping strewn fields with different material there. Ben can also weigh in on this uh, and he'll tell you, we got the Franconia strewn field out in, in the US and there's multiple different meteorites in multiple overlapping strewn fields in that Franconia area. So that can be interesting. There's other also interesting things to think about when there's not just one official classification, you end up getting into other things like cost and value, which I have written down there. So examples of that would be necessarily like uh, NWA-11 or al Huguni 001 Both of those meteorites are the first of their classification in the Met Bowl, but there are multiple other finds in that same area that were turned in, classified, provided different names or numbers, and that can make it difficult to keep track of. And not all that material is valuated at the same uh, price point, uh, depending on if it's the original material or a paired material. So then there's other things to think about when we talk about pairing too. How confident is the person doing the pairing that the material is in fact the same? Things that's like a, That's a big one, man. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want that just to sit out there and that's a big one. The confidence of the person doing the pairing is, is really something you're going to touch on throughout your uh, presentation today. Yes. Uh, and then you also get things like uh, keeping track of the provenance, right? So having that information recorded on who did the pairing, when in the process it was paired necessarily, how it was paired. That's all important things that go into the validity of that material. So looking at the very early on steps, right? If the material is paired by the wholesaler, so this is right after the finder, right? So finders oftentimes sell to a, a, a dealer in the region and then you get uh, dealer wholesale pairings. In the, so region, what's the, the region you're talking about, I'm sorry, uh, the region you're dealing with, uh, talking about is Northwest Africa mainly. Yes, and yes, mostly hot desert, right? 
And so what are some of the factors that are going into this? Uh, they have direct access to the finders. So they can really get with the finders and, and get and squeeze out all those little intricate details where it was found, um, how much was found, and they can use that closeness to the source of the information in their favor in order to help make accurate parents. The other things they have going on in their favor is they're dealing with bulk quantities, right? So they're dealing with a lot of material. They have a lot of other pieces to compare to. Uh, if, a, if a seller necessarily mixes something in, since they have a bulk of material that they can go through, they can pick out what doesn't look right um, from a visual perspective. Um, so wholesale is a common point where, where pairings can often occur. Um, and I kind of put down the questions you should ask uh, the dealer if you're buying from them on uh, how you would figure out how well the confidence level is on that sort of pairing. So mm -hmm. how seasoned of a dealer are they? How, uh, what's their reputation like? Does the material come with a guarantee? So if you <laughs> were to turn into a classifier and they say, no, it's not the same, you know, you've you've cut your risk uh, on paired material. Those are all things to think about when you're when you're making a procurement. Very good. Yeah. And this wholesaler is usually, like you said, a step up in the food chain who's seeing a lot of weight of material come through their hands. And they're more uh, more experienced to identify what is and what isn't, especially they can go back and go oh, last week or last year. I saw something like that. Let me go grab it. Exactly. So moving further away from the find, you get either to an intermediate dealer or a retailer, right? Uh, so again, things you're, you're looking at here, there's pros and cons, right? So a lot of times the uh, retail dealers are also a lot of the folks who are turning in for classification. So they have access to either classifiers that are experts in the field or also very, very seasoned collectors. So they can do things like phone a friend, you know? Uh, show the material to other very seasoned individuals who have, you know, valid um, calibrated eyes, so to say, uh, or necessarily some equipment too, to go ahead and help add some, uh, some data points and some other opinions uh, and get a diversity of opinions on the material to make sure it is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, you know, one expert saying, yeah, this is good to go is not as powerful as 10 experts all agreeing independently saying, hey, it's good to go. It's, mm -hmm. it, is, it looks like what it should look like. And again, many, many of the same things that you were looking at if you were dealing with wholesale, you look at when you're dealing with retail, what's the reputation of the dealer? Uh, how seasoned uh, are they a veteran dealer? You know, what's, what's their, uh, their pedigree? Yeah, again, do you get that guarantee along with the material? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike, I wanted to know if you would spend uh, just a little extra time on the last one there where you're, you're mentioning, was it done with, or I'm going to paraphrase, was was this pairing with Topher's official meteorite, was it done with that person's, the, the main mass holder's permission, inclusion, cooperation, knowledge? Can you talk about that and why that is an important thing here? Because you're talking about the intermediate retailer dealer, that this is my level. So I, this is something I have to deal with them. Certainly, exactly. And, and, and that is probably the biggest common courtesy that should be done. If you are selling material that is paired to something else that someone has gone through the process of turning in 20% off their piece to classify, uh, it's, it's A, a courtesy, but it's B, also that person is just like that wholesale dealer where they have more access to the material than you do necessarily. And so they should have a more than valid opinion on whether or not that material is the same. They can do things like validate who they got it from, if that's not necessarily public information. So you have another data point to say, okay, well, this material came from the same source, right? Or, or another source that you can then tie back together to a third party source that's shared. So yes, talking to the person that submitted the classification uh, is a great way to help build, bolster confidence that the pairing is correct. And also that you're not stepping on anybody's toes. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, it also paid off really well on uh, uh, Irichidia 004, which is a Winonite. There was a low metal and a high metal con uh, content stone, but there was three people working on submitting the stuff. So we all worked together rather than having stuff paired. We all went in together to make sure we had 
the right samples for, to the right scientists so we can get the right classification. So that's another way you can avoid pairing or work around pairing, but uh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, real good points. Okay, classifier paired material. This is going a step further up. Uh, so again, there's a difference and we're gonna talk about this a little bit between officially classified and classified paired. What this is, is basically if more material comes out, you go back to the person who did the classification right? You turn in a little more material. It's not necessarily going to get classified as a new paired number, but they're going to do the validation, right? So you are going to a certified expert on that particular material since they turned in the original classification to get your validation. And, and so again, this goes back to how we say pair. Not all these pairings are the same. You should use these ways to uh, explain to other folks how you are going about saying it's paired, whether it's dealer paired or whether it's finder paired, whether it's classified paired, so that there's no confusion about what was being done. Most people selling meters aren't going to put paired, pairing, or anything like that on there, let alone any disclaimer about who paired it. Is that something you should feel comfortable asking about? Uh, yeah, I definitely think it's something you should feel comfortable asking about. And I, I ask it all the time personally. I want to, as a person who's supposed to be curating a meteorite and uh, making sure I get all the data associated with that piece. I want to know everything there is to know about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think as uh, uh, most reputable sellers out there, they don't mind sharing information like that. Uh, sometimes they may say, hey, listen, you know, I might still be in the middle of doing a buy. You know, mm -hmm. I can't tell you right now, but in the long haul, a lot of times, uh, you know, all the valid dealers out there will usually share information with you. If you wait around long enough, you'll, you'll get what you want maybe at the way for this deal to go through first, but all right, cool. <laughs> oh yeah, certainly. Um, and then I had a, one more bullet kind of down there that's oh, important. Sorry. A lot of, if you turn in the, if the stone and they're just doing a, uh, a pairing for you and not a full classification that moderates the amount of cost you end up putting out. Cause you're not going through the cost of a full classification. You're just doing a validation. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Cause now we're moving on to the touchstone standard. This is the official one, the most expensive and hard to get, but the officially paired material. Yes. So officially paired material, right? This is going to go uh, in against, go to the nomcom. It's going to get put ultimately into the meteoritical bulletin. Uh, it's going to get a individual number and in the details at the bottom, it should say what it is paired to, if that was your goal. Um, so again, there's a lot of uh, work that's done by the person submitting the classification with the classifier. So if it's getting turned in and there's a good chance that it's paired material and that's why you're submitting it uh, in order to get it paired, that should be made known to the classifier. Um, because there's a lot of meteorites in Metbull and not necessarily are they gonna just go ahead and assume they know what that is supposed to be paired to. You have to let them know so that they can go ahead and uh, make an assessment on the analysis. Uh, again, like you said, uh, it's it's the benchmark. It's the way business, uh, you, you know, should be done without any risk involved, really. But again, it does it adds max cost and max time, right? Because yeah. you're you're getting the most detailed uh, validation that it is paired material. On here, you have something about location matters. Can can you talk to a little bit about that? Certainly. So so a named meteorite, all the additional recovered material to that would get added to the classification, right? It, they don't tack on new numbers. When multiple materials are found overlapping, like in that strewn field example I provided earlier, they'll create what's called a dense collection area, DCA, in which case all the new material, uh, whether it's paired or even a new meteorite type found in the same location, will get a dense collection area name, mm -hmm. right? So it'll have the same name and a different number tacked on the end of it. And now some of those DCA numbers may all be that same paired material, but in the case of an overlapping strewn field, you'll have some that's all paired together and some that's not paired, but has a very similar looking name. So that's mm -hmm. something to look out for when you're doing uh, purchases to make sure you're not uh, buying duplicates. This is the exciting one though. Explain the launch paired material. Yeah, so this is this is not the type of pairing we're talking about in all the, uh, the other ones where it's it's the same material. This is the same material from the same location on the parent body. Mm -hmm. So uh, these could be meteorites found in any location uh, that when they look at them and they look at their uh, cosmic ray exposure age or, or other things like that, they realize that the composition, the structure, uh, the chemical breakdown, 
Uh, it's all the same. And the chances of that happening are most likely because they came from the same source crater, uh, from the same impact event. So again, that's kind of the, the really interesting thing. And, and down at the bottom, I uh, highlighted a couple of different ANSMET recoveries. Uh, these are Antarctic meteorites. They are all different find locations, but wow. they have different amount of travel time, but the compositions are all the same and they're thought to be launch paired. Wow. Mike, I don't know if you're prepared to, I'm going to hit you off the top of your head here. I don't know if you're prepared to talk about this or not, but when you're talking about launch paired material being tracked back to the same event, let's say a lunar uh lunar event that that uh emitted the these rocks to us um i'm thinking of like a gadamas uh uh the the lunar uh they're calling it like the uh, apollo 16 one there's several of them that seem to be paired or right around pairing are those is that an event like that you're talking about here so uh my understanding of the gadamas uh meteorites are all in like sequential number like three and four which will both be, you know, be marketed as uh, the Apollo 16 lunar. Um, those were basically due to find location, not due to uh, necessarily a launch pair where they were found in various, vastly different areas, but have the same composition and would. Be, so they're from the same source site, but they're also from a similar uh, land find location site. So that's that's not the equivalent of like the one down at the bottom where you have the Yamato, uh, Suka range uh, and Miller range ones down in. Antarctica. Gotcha. Yeah, those are all separate locations, but we're mm -hmm. talking about almost over overlapping strewn fields in the case of the lunar. Awesome. Thank you, man. Uh, and so this is kind of the last slot I had. So um, this was an attempt, uh, uh, and this is a paper from 1996 in LPI, if anyone wants to get a good read. So this was uh, an attempt to take uh, a valued numbered system and apply it to pairings. So basically, uh, this breakdown apply different levels of factors to apply numerical values and say, hey, if we look at a new piece of material against a classified piece, which was the important first part, had to be against the classified piece, you know, let's look at it and we'll assign minor point values for the hand specimen or thin section comparison uh, to assign some points to it. Let's look at the shock level and see how those compare. Let's uh, do bulk chemistry and uh, see if that's a, uh, a match. And again, that was really only done for the rare classifications where they would have a unique chemistry. So not applied to your, you know, overly common 12,000 L6s out there. Nice. Uh, and then they looked at other factors like uh, how close they were found to each other. Uh, do they have matching uh, terrestrial ages? So have they been on the planet for the same amount of time? And they're looking at... Uh, isotope ratios to do that in addition to uh, the cosmic ray exposure age, you know, how, how much uh, time did they spend out uh, orbiting before they ultimately impacted the earth and does that match? And then they looked at other things like comparing weathering grades uh, and surface exposure times and they got into some of the different ways in that paper on how they do that using either isotopic analysis of aluminum, chlorine or carbon on the exteriors. They can use all that stuff to try to tie everything back together. Uh, and again, the whole point was let's let's make a grading system to help kind of quantify how confident we are that they are paired material. Wow, I kind of wish that took off a little bit more because you don't you don't hear about it or see about it. But no, no, you don't. Well, Mike, thank you so much for for the one hundred and one. Uh, as always, you're 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 deep diving into the science, but you're keeping it easy for us to understand, and you're touching on important things. So we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. Hey, no problem. All right. That was a great 101. I'm glad we, we were able to dig in there. Now I have a piece that I have a paired piece and it's very, very tiny. So I'm going to show it to you and explain why this is paired. I'll let you guys just appreciate what that says at first. So this, I would say, is a classifier pair, but not an official pair. Uh, it's, it's, it is Black Beauty. It is the Martian. Um, Holly McBretchia. And you can see this is a complete slice. So you can pretty much guess how small the stone was. Nice brecciation in there too. Uh, you can pretty much imagine how small the stone was. In order to get that, that classified, 
you'd have to you'd have to lose so much of it that um, Dr. Carla G actually classified the original Black Beauty NWA 7034. And when this was brought to him, he validated that it is the same material. So I have a 0 0.071 gram slice, complete slice of Black Beauty. I, you can leave out the weight and, and when you want to show off the people, but yeah, that's, that's my, my paired uh, item that I want to share with you guys. Thank you. Well, this is Topher from 45 Minutes into the Future. We just had a conversation with Daniel Shake, a meteorite classifier and friend of the Knowledge Bolide. So the discussion we had with him was about pairing. Uh, and then we started going off the rails a little bit, asking more questions and great information. So I'm going to splice this off and, and make it its own um, its own video. So just wanted to pop in from the, from the future and let you know we have some really cool stuff to talk about. All right, we are going to continue on with some show and tell. We have Carl Patzer. Carl, what do you have for us today, buddy? Well, um, this is going to be an example of an officially paired meteorite paired to a published meteorite. And what we're talking about here is a pair of angrites. And 6291 was purchased in Morocco in 2010 and then later uh, fully classified and went through the entire process, which is necessary to become officially paired. And it was uh, then officially paired to NWA 2999, which had been found back in 2004, which is what we're seeing now. Um, so it's a classic example of, of the officially paired to a published meteorite, um, the holy grail of pairings, as people like to say. And there's an example in the map where it clearly states paired that's, with NWA 2999. That's beautiful to see. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt there is there, Carl. When you see your NWA 6291 officially paired with a, with a link, you, you know it's good to go. One interesting fact is these meteorites had very low total known weights. Um, 2999 only had 392 grams, and 6291 only 250 grams total known weight. Thank you so much. I appreciate your submission to our pairing. Appreciate well, you're it. very welcome, Topher. Thank you. Oh, Roberto Vargas is in the house with us. Roberto, I have a uh, PowerPoint that you put together for us. And he's going to do his PowerPoint to death. 26 slides, but he's going to move through pretty quickly. So hold on. Let me get that set up. Ooh, ungrouped edition. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so um, so it's 23 slides, but it's only, uh, I think, six meteorites. The first, So the first three are going to be 011 pairings. For anybody who doesn't know, O11 is an ungrouped achondrite. It was found in 1999 and has a TKW of 40 grams. So um, this first one is uh, NWA13274. This is uh, one of Mark Lyon's uh, classifications. It was classified in 2019. It's uh, got a TKW of 256 grams. Wow, these are beautiful, man. Thank you. Yeah, pictures in the light kind of kind of do it on this stuff, um, just because of how nice the material is. Here's a macro picture I took with one of those uh, USB microscopes, and then this is uh, one three two seven four. That's the one that that Mark Lyons is, and then this next picture is uh, seven one two nine. So um, it's 7129 is basically the same exact thing. It's a pairing. Uh, it's, it's paired in Metbull. It's, it was originally from Gary Fujihara. Um, TKW on 7129 was 50 grams. Wow. Uh, so, so very, very small TKW, like NWA11. NWA11 was only, four, was only 40 grams. So this is only 10 grams more. Um, but you can see... Uh, it came with uh, Gary's card, and it even says uh, translucent crystal on the card. And if you go to the next photo. Oh, wait, um, it's, in the, it's in the very next one, but let's zoom in on this for a second. Yeah. Wow. That's spectacular. Now, in the next picture, it's actually translucent. Look at that. You can see the little translucent crystal in there. So that's that's pretty cool. And um, you know, th these are all examples of why, like of how like the original might be worth more 
than like the pairings, right? So in this case, even though this is a pairing, because it's only got a TKW of 50 grams, it might be worth more. NWA 11 with a TKW of 40 grams is worth the most, obviously. Yeah. Um, it's the original and, and so on. So the next one is um nwa 4587 another 011 pairing from 2006 uh 530 gram tkw so just over a half a kilo originally from greg hupe came with greg hupe's card so you know um it's legit and it's not paired through the hobby or paired through a collector or whatever exactly but, well it's it's paired in, in the in in the med bowl so mm -hmm. it was paired by by the scientists <laughs> It's uh, it's there's uh, it's it's all it's all Official, officially paired. So, exactly, officially paired. So those are the O eleven O eleven pairings. Uh, next up, I wanted to show off the um, NWA seven three two five. So this is the OG, um, one of the OGs of of the presentation. So uh -huh. this one came from Stefan Ralu. Stefan Ralu is the one who's responsible for um, bringing uh, 7325 to market, TKW of 345 grams. I've actually had discussions with Stefan Ralu, who says, if it doesn't come with the card, it's not 7325. Mm -hmm. So it's like, basically, he's saying like his material is 7325, but there are a number of pairings. It's obviously the same material. It's, it's unmistakable. This material is unmistakable. It's so unique. It kind of reminds me of like those those olivine bombs that you find, but it's extraterrestrial, obviously. So, um, yep. So that's the picture with the card. Uh, that's the back of the specimen. So a little external, external features on that. Is this the one that was hypothesized to come from Mercury at first, or for some? Time? At one point, yes. Yeah. At one point, okay. this was thought to be Mercurian. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, next up is 5400. So 5400 um, has been classified, and I heard um, Daniel talking about updated classifications. So at one point, it was thought to be uh, achondrite brachinite like. Um, which there are currently only four in Met Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. But this one was believed to have been created from impact, from the impact that created our moon. So there's a theory that oh. Earth was impacted by a larger um, asteroid. And basically that resulted in pieces breaking off of Earth and turning into um, the moon as we know it today. Uh, so yeah, so this is a really cool one. Uh, TKW on this one is 4.82 kilograms. It was found in 2008. Um, and then uh, there are a couple pairings to it. So the next pictures are of NWA 5363 paired to 5400. That wasn't paired by uh, anyone. That was paired by the scientists. So basically, if you look at the Met Bull write-up, it says... Uh, it references 5,400. So it's kind of like the same material. This one came from Greg Cupe. The TKW on 5,363 is 2.46 kilograms. Um, and it was actually found the same year. It was found the same year as uh, 5,400. NWA uh, 5,400 and 5,363 are pretty cool. Yeah. This uh, NWA 11 pairing is just amazing. This is this is one of my favorite pieces right here. And oh, yeah. literally there's so little of that stuff that if a new rock is found, that is going to be classified and it's going to be paired to it as well. Because this was probably only a 50 gram stone that was found and there's a full slice out of it, I would imagine. Yep. Wow. Super interesting. You, uh, you are a, uh, <clears throat> a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you for joining us and preparing this photo slide for us on the subject of pairing and uh, why you shouldn't avoid paired material. But if you're wary about it, if you're smart about it, if you do your research, if you ask your questions, you can be very happy with getting paired material with a high confidence level. Well, that was our pairing information we have. If you have any questions for us, drop them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks a lot for joining us on the Knowledge Bowl. I'd hang out and remember, I have meteorites for sale. 
the education is free, but go ahead and look at the link in my description for the video and uh, feel free to reward yourself with a nice meteorite. Take care, guys. Bye, guys.